Hey YouTubers, it's Charlie. So for my Game of Thrones bonus video this week, I wanted to talk about the East and Marine, just because this is gonna be a big Daenerys episode, episode three that is. So I'm gonna be focusing mostly on the history of the Giscari Empire as it evolved into Slaver's Bay in Marine. If you're totally finding me for the first time, I'm just doing bonus videos for each new episode of Game of Thrones. I also do episode reviews and Q&As. Be sure to subscribe to get everything. I'm even doing a weekly Q&A. The next round starts whenever I post my episode three review later tonight. That'll happen after the episode airs. So for this video, I'm assuming that you've watched everything up to season four, episode two. So potential spoiler alert for anything that happens before those events. So let's start with a little history on the Giscari Empire. They were the first big great civilization that predated the Valyrian Empire. The pyramid that we saw in the trailers is an example of their architecture that survived to current day. In a generalized way, I think of them as like Egyptians that were later occupied by the Greeks and eventually by the Romans. I think of the Valyrians as more like the Roman Empire. Every time I think of the doom of Valyria, I always think of the fall of the Roman Empire, even though those two events are completely different, you know, very different reasons why both those empires fell. Valyria was basically physically obliterated by acts of nature, and the Roman Empire just got too big to maintain effectively. Again, in real life, very different. But the Giscari architecture mirrors a lot of the pyramids, and their harpy statues remind me a lot of the Egyptian sphinxes. Most of the big Giscari cities were destroyed in wars with Valyria, which is why there aren't a lot of physical reminders of their existence, with the exception of, you know, the pyramids, and some of the cultural aspects, like in the slaves, as well as in the Unsullied. I'm actually really excited for this week's episode because we finally get to see those Unsullied fight based on the clips in the trailers. It looks like it's going to be pretty badass. From a historical perspective, the Unsullied kept a lot of the fighting traditions from the Giscari. Most notably the lockstep way in which they fight, like an infantry basically. They also use a phalanx formation when they're not using siege engines and catapults. So you can see George R. R. Martin is mixing and matching a lot of bits from different histories because the Unsullied descend from what you would consider Egyptians, and the Phalanx was a Greek fighting technique. You probably saw them use it in the movie 300. Siege engines kind of came from Assyria, and catapults were also something from ancient Greece. So the reason why Daenerys has been marching to each of these new cities and trying to free slaves is because slave trade is the primary source for income for most of the big cities. The reason all that slaving got started was because of the wars with the Valyrians. Whenever the Giscari were finally defeated, the Valyrians sowed salt into all the soil so that they couldn't grow crops anymore. So everyone had to turn to something else for income. You know, thus you end up with the slaving cities, which included Astapor, Yunkai, and Marine. Those first two cities we saw in season three. Remember how Daenerys flame broiled everything in sight? So that brings us to right now outside the gates of Marine, the last stop on Daenerys' quest to end slave trade in the east, or at least in Slaver's Bay. The difference between this city and those other two is that it's much bigger. Just as a point of reference, Marine, in terms of size, is as big as Yunkai and Astapor combined, so it's massive. So it's a good thing she brought all this Unsullied because she's gonna need them. Remember in episode one when they were on the road and stopped to look at all those crucified slaves? The officials in Marine had been tracking Daenerys' progress, so they used this Scorch Earth defense against her. That means they basically nailed up all those people and destroyed the land surrounding the walls so that Daenerys wouldn't have any natural defenses. So I don't want to talk too much about what the plot is going to be. We can save that for my review video, which I'll post after the episode airs. But let's talk a little bit more about the city itself, because it actually has some really awesome landmarks. First off, there's the Great Pyramid, which we've seen already. Then there's the Temple of Graces and the Fighting Pits, the three big main locations. The temple is just a religious building that we might get to see soon, but the fighting pits are exactly what they sound like. They're part of a gladiator style combat arena, just like the Greek Colosseum. So there's also a whole lot of culture in Marine 2 that we need to talk about, but I think I'm gonna save it for future episode videos. I just, I don't know how far the story is gonna progress in each episode. So I wanna save things like, you know, Sons of the Harpy, as well as all the slaving families, and the Harpy himself. So we can talk about those in future videos. We have seen a little bit from inside the city in the trailers, most notably night scenes, but imagine Astapur and Yunkai being a walk in the park compared to the problems Daenerys is going to face in Marine. Not only does she have to defeat the city's official forces outside, she'll have to deal with the guerrilla organizations and urban combat when she's inside the city. Most of the fighting that we've seen on Game of Thrones on the show so far in Westeros and in the East has been open field combat. We haven't seen a lot of urban, you know, close quarters combat. Urban combat is something that's just totally new to most of the people of Westeros. Even the Unsullied aren't really meant for urban combat. That's where Dario comes in. Think of him as like a special forces leader in Daenerys' army, even though I'm sure Grey Worm would do just as well in any situation by himself. 
So here's a couple things that I'm really excited about in the episode that I think you guys should pay special attention to. First, the fighting style of the Unsullied. We've really only seen them march. Daenerys isn't using the Rod of Control anymore, but she still is giving her orders to Grey Worm, and he gives those to the group leaders, and so on, all the way down to the regular foot soldiers. You know, chain of command, infantry style. This will look very cool in big wide open scenes. Second, the fighting style of Dario and the Storm Crows. Remember, they're mercenaries, so their fighting style is going to be very different from the Unsullied, but they're both going to look super cool. We did get a look at his blades whenever he and Grey Worm were having that contest in Episode 1. He, unlike Grey Worm, is a capable negotiator too, which is why he's better for more, you know, small, important missions, and Grey Worm is better for the all-out open war. And third, the architecture of Marine. I didn't actually see a lot of the physical sets that they filmed those scenes on, but the CG in the trailers doesn't even do the city justice. It's amazing. Think of like a larger, much, much grander version of King's Landing with a freaking pyramid in the middle of it. That trailer scene with Daenerys inside the underground structure is also from the pyramid. So maybe not in this episode, but pretty soon we'll get a really good tour of the city. If you've ever traveled to any of the really old cities in Europe, you know what I'm talking about. There's just something about the architecture that's just so much cooler than the newer cities that you would find in America. So I actually think of Marine as like a mixture of ancient Rome and ancient Egypt, just from an architectural standpoint. But let me know, what are you most excited to see in the episode? Remember, Daenerys is only part of the story. We also have the aftermath of the Purple Wedding in King's Landing, and we have Jon Snow and the Wildlings in the North. So there's actually quite a bit going on. I'm expecting, you know, most of what happens in this episode to carry forward into the next episode just because it seems like there's too much going on for it all to be contained to one hour. So like I said, I'll be posting my review after the episode airs tonight, probably around 9.30 p.m. Pacific time. Be sure to subscribe to get it and feel free to leave me suggestions for future bonus videos to do. Right now, click here to catch up on the Purple Wedding and click here for my Q&A video. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you guys tonight. High fives.